What's going on YouTube? It is time for yet another game pickups video. Let me tell you, this is a big month. Uh, I did a lot of road trips this month. I had some time off work. I hit uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana, Kansas City, Missouri, Lawrence, Kansas, and Springfield, Missouri, along with my hometown of St. Louis, Missouri. So a lot of uh, good game hunting opportunities along the way. Um, I've got a lot to show off this month, all the things I've picked up, so uh, let's just get this rolling. Um, some of the systems I bought quite a bit for, because those are the ones I'm focusing on a lot over this month. But uh, let's go through everything I picked up through the month of July 2014. So I'll knock out a couple of the, uh, the systems I didn't buy a whole lot of games for first. And uh, we'll start off with the Wii. I picked up the uh, remake of Klonoa for the Wii. Always liked the original, kind of want to see how the uh, remake turned out. Kind of cool. Um, also for the Wii, I picked up Real Heroes Firefighter. Heard this is kind of cool. Um, that's all I got for the Wii. The next system, I only picked up one game for, and that is the original Xbox. I got Samurai Showdown 5, which uh, one of the last SNK fighters for the system, which is kind of cool to get. Um, next system, I only picked up two games for. That is the Xbox 360. And both of these are Shooters by Cave. Uh, I think they are the only two that came out in the U.S. There's tons more that came out in Japan only. Um, the first one of these is Akai Katana. And the second one is Death Smiles. And this is the regular edition of the game. Um, been wanting to get both of these for a while, so it's kind of cool to, to have these. I haven't had a chance to try them yet. Uh, next system I only got a couple games for is the GameCube. And the first one of these is Ultimate Muscle. Uh, I think this one's getting a little bit tough to find. It's kind of cool. I Sort of know the muscle characters from back in the 80s, but um, never watched the new series or anything. Um, next one for GameCube is Bomberman Jetters. And I've played this one a little bit. It's okay. Um, it's not as good as, like, Saturn Bomberman and uh, Bomberman Online on the Dreamcast, but kind of the same style. It's got that cell shaded look to it. It's okay. Um, finally, for the GameCube, one that uh, probably most people have had in their collections a long time. I just never got this game. I didn't really like it when it came out, and I don't know. Maybe I'll change my opinion now. We'll see. Uh, but that is Super Mario Sunshine. Um, always liked the old Mario games, but kind of lost interest once they got to about this time, and haven't really played any of the newer ones either. Uh, next system I'll show you is the original Nintendo. And uh, as I said before, my collection's pretty much done for that system, um, outside of like the Panesian games and a couple things like that. But um, I started picking up a few of the variants that I didn't have, and I got a uh, second press of The Adventures of Link this month. Um, it's kind of boring. It doesn't have the gold cartridge that the original pressing did, but uh, this is the later version of the game. So I still need the, uh, the original Zelda, the second pressing of that as well, but they did a great cartridge variation of that too. Um, this month I also picked up a complete copy of Defender 2. And had the cart for many years, but um, just thought it was kind of a cool-looking box, and I didn't have it in my box collection, so added that to the collection. Kind of neat. And finally, I did something I've probably never done for, before in all my years of collecting NES. I just paid money for a box. Um, I always got boxes and manuals along the way, but I never really was a box manual collector for that system, because it's just ridiculous to try to get all the boxes for it. Um, but this is one I always wanted, because this is the last piece I needed to have the whole series of those games complete. So now I have a Ninja Gaiden 3 box, and uh, now I have that whole series complete with box and manual. So it's kind of cool, because this is one of my favorite series on that system. So uh, yeah, it was neat to get those, even though I had to pay a little bit too much for it, but whatever, it's cool. Um, next system I'll go over is the Super Nintendo, and uh, I've got a few more games for that this month, not too crazy. Um, first of these is a boxed copy of Total Carnage, I believe this is a uh, somewhat sequel to Smash TV. I haven't tried it out yet, but I always like Smash TV, so it's probably pretty cool. Um, next is a uh, one of the only Taito RPGs that made it to the U.S., and that is Lufia and the Fortress of Doom. Um, kind of cool to get that. I've wanted that for a while. Next one is Final Fight 2. Um, then we have the Pirates of Dark Water. And I've owned the Genesis version of this for a few months, but the Super Nintendo version is completely different. This is a side-scrolling beat-em-up game. It's okay, the sound is really bad in it, is one thing I'll say, but uh, I played it with a friend this month. It was, it was kind of fun. We had, we had a good time playing it, so it's kind of neat. Um, better than that, another one I played a lot this month, is Sunset Riders. And um, I've always heard this game's great, I just kind of delayed picking it up, but uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, next one is Dungeon Master. 
And uh, this one's a little bit unusual because it doesn't have the name of the game on the front label art. It's only on the spine. So I thought that was kind of unique about it. Um, after that, I have Earthworm Jim 2. Then I got Top Gear 3000. I got the uh, original Final Fight as well. So I still need to get Final Fight 3 and Final Fight Guy, which is the really difficult one to find. But um, I'll get there eventually, I'm sure. Um, next is Super Bomberman 2, and I still need a Super Bomberman, but uh, kind of cool to get this one because I do like the Bomberman series games. Um, next is one of the series I hate, and that is the uh, Koei strategy games. Uh, I got Nobunaga's Ambition. Ambition. Um, then I also got two more Koei games that I will probably never play. Uh, first one of these is PTO, and the second one is PTO Part 2. Um, yeah, just can't stand Koei games. They're not very fun. They're very dry strategy games. And finally, for Super Nintendo, I picked up Goof Troop. Uh, I believe this is the second press of this because it has the Majesco uh, printed back. Uh, no label on the back, so whatever. But uh, yeah, kind of need to get that, I guess. Um, that is it for Super Nintendo this month. So let me go into a system I don't always get games for, but I always like to find, and that is the TurboGrafx-16. Um, I am a big fan of that system, but again, those games are just extremely hard to find in the wild, and if you do find them, they're usually really expensive. Um, I did pretty good with these this month, though, so uh, I'll show you a couple. None of these are super rare or anything like that, but they're kind of neat to pick up, uh, especially just finding them in a store. Um, first one of these is Battle Royale, and um, mm, wrestling, I guess. don't think it's really anything good. Um, second one I kind of want to try. I don't think it's that good, but it's just kind of an uh, unusual one for the system, and that is Night Creatures. I believe this was U.S. developed. And then we have um, JJ and Jeff, which was known in Japan as Kato-chan and Kin-chan. Um, kind of a weird TV announcer uh, action wacky game, I don't know. But yeah, really weird that this even came out in the U.S., but it was actually one of the first titles on the system. Um, next, I upgraded my Hue card only to a complete copy of Bonk's Adventure. And um, I don't know if these stickers came with the system or what, but some of the games had these cool Bonk stickers on the back of them that somebody put on them, so I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I'll definitely save that. I think it's a cool-looking sticker. Um, and then I got a copy of The Legendary Axe, which I've never owned. I've always had Legendary Axe 2, but uh, I know this game is quite a bit different than the sequel, but I think it's also supposed to be a pretty good game. So uh, looking forward to trying that out. Um, next, my friend helped me out. Uh, my friend Bob helped me last night with a trade. And I got a complete copy of Exile for the TurboGrafx CD. Um, I am trying to collect all the Working Designs games, and there's actually another Exile game for Turbo as well that I need. But uh, this is, I think, the first one of the first uh, Turbo games that they made for the Turbo CD system. So pretty much anything, if it's Working Designs, it's usually a good sign that it's going to be a, a game of my interest. So I think I want to kind of collect all their stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a nice copy of Exile, so that's, that's really cool to get that. Uh, next system I'll go through, and this might take a little while because I got a lot of games for it, is the Sega Dreamcast. Um, I am, again, trying to collect all the Dreamcast games. As of tonight, I am 10 away from having a complete collection of U.S. Um, games released for the Dreamcast. So uh, I knocked out a big chunk of the collection this month. I put a lot of focus on finding Dreamcast games this month. And pretty confident that uh, by the time I do my next video next month, I'll be done with the collection. I can move on to something else. So... Pretty cool to get that taken care of because uh, it's one of my favorite systems. Um, one thing I learned when collecting all the games for it is there actually are co quite a few crappy games for it too, but um, there's still a lot of gems, a lot of stuff that I missed out on along the way. So um, I'll try to rattle through these pretty quick, but uh, if you like the Dreamcast, you're probably in for a treat because I picked up a lot of Dreamcast stuff this month. Um, so the first one of these is Industrial Spy Operation Espionage which uh, has some really cool artwork on it. I think it's neat to get. Um, it's one of the more obscure games, I think, because it was by NEC, and uh, Uf UFO published it, so um, pretty cool to get that. Next one is Soldier of Fortune. Um, nothing special there. Then we have Maximum Pool, which was the only pool game released for the Dreamcast in the U.S. Um, then we have Real Fishing Wild, which I think is the only Natsume game for the Dreamcast in the U.S., Nightmare Creatures 2, um, Ms. Pac-Man Maze Madness, one of the, um, I don't know, I guess new uh, U.S. developed Ms. Pac-Man games, does have the original included, so at least there's uh, something kind of neat in there as an extra. Um, then we have South Park Rally, that that's a good one. 
Um, 102 Dalmatians, Puppies to the Rescue. Never saw the movie. Don't really care. Uh, next one is Conflict Zone, Modern War Strategy. This was one of the last games released for the Dreamcast in the U.S., so kind of cool to get that. Um, next one is Evil Dead, Hail to the King. And this came out for a few other systems as well, I believe. Uh, then we have Street Fighter 3 Double Impact. This is one I do actually want to play. I think it's kind of cool to get this. Um, I've always liked the Street Fighter games, just never had this one. Next one is Toy Story 2. And um, guess what? Never saw that movie either, so it doesn't mean anything to me. And kind of piggybacking with that, we also have Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, which uh, came out after the other one, but it's another Toy Story franchise game. Then we have Arrow Wings 2 Airstrike uh, Flight Sim. Not my style of game, so probably won't play it. Um, next one, I don't know, kind of like to see what this one's all about. Um, Chronicles of Pern Dragon Riders. Um, based on a uh, best-selling novel series, so mm, might be good, who knows. Um, next stack, we have another Street Fighter game to start this off. This one was kind of a thorn in my side. I, I, I've said before, I already had pretty much all of the expensive Dreamcast games. Back when it came out, I bought a lot of the uh, really high-dollar stuff that, that's considered you know high-dollar now. Um, I own back when it was new, but this is one of the ones that kind of was uh, still pretty expensive for me to pick up um, as I've been collecting these. Most of these other games I got were very, very cheap. Um, but this one is in pristine condition, and I'm excited to get it, and I do want to play it. And that is Street Fighter III Third Strike. So this is the uh, other version of Street Fighter III, but the later version of it. So cool to get that one, and especially in very nice shape. Uh, then we have Worms Armageddon, which was the first of two Worms games for the Dreamcast. Um, another one I don't care about, Railroad Tycoon 2. Yeah, that, that's a lot of fun. Um, then we have a port of Dino Crisis by Capcom. Uh, another series I've never enjoyed, but um, I guess this game is pretty popular on Dreamcast, and that is Mortal Kombat Gold. And then we have, because it was the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, Extreme Sports, because everything had to be extreme during that time period. Next one is Magforce Racing. Uh, I don't think you see this one very often. Not a lot of people talk about it as being rare, but I don't know. I think it's kind of rare. Um, next one's one I had back when Dreamcast was new, but uh, for some reason sold it. I think I beat it and just got tired of it, and that is Gauntlet Legends, uh, but I can say that's a pretty fun game. Next one is Evolution, which was, uh, I think, probably the first RPG that came out for the Dreamcast. Really wasn't uh, super well-received, but I think it sold pretty well, at least. Um, next one is one of my favorite games, and I just never happened to own the Dreamcast version of it. I bought it on PlayStation because it came out on PlayStation first, but that is Mr. Driller, and um, I love this series of games. I think they're a lot of fun. Um, this one was really neat because Namco went the extra mile and made, like, every Dreamcast accessory compatible with it. You could actually play this game with the Samba de Amigo maracas if you want to. Um, it's pretty absurd, but uh, I think you can play it with a light gun if you have the Japanese version of it, even. It's pretty uh, pretty crazy they went and did that, but uh, neat that it has that feature. Uh, next one is Deep Fighter, and this is a two-disc game, which is kind of unusual for an early release. Um, after that, we have Star Wars Episode One Racer. Mm, yeah, hate Star Wars still. Next one is Rainbow Six Rogue Spear. We have the hot new variation of Ready to Rumble Boxing, which was the uh, reissue when they had some uh, problems with the original press of the game. They fixed the bugs and uh, put that little hot new bullseye on there. Um, next one is Omicron the Nomad Soul, and uh, kind of notable because it stars David Bowie, which um, I do like David Bowie, so it's kind of neat that... Uh, they decided to make a game around him for some reason, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Probably not my style of game, but kind of cool. Uh, next one is a series I just don't care about at all, but um, did make it a one Dreamcast release, and that is Grand Theft Auto 2. And let's go to the next stack. So, first one of these is um, Sega's attempt to come up with a successor to the Mario Party um, success, and uh, that is Sonic Shuffle, which is a party game with Sonic characters. Next we have Shadow Man, um, mm, whatever. Um, then we have one that was pretty popular in the Dreamcast day. Uh, I think it actually got a lot of people to buy the system, and that is Fantasy Star Online. Um, not really my style of game, but it was kind of cool that this saw some success in the U.S. 
I think uh, they spawned a few other Fantasy Star games on other systems too, which is kind of cool. Um, next we have another one of the uh, kind of shovelware arcade updates, and that is Qbert. Um, we also have the sequel to one of the earlier games, and that is Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2. Then there is Soul Fighter, which uh, uh, looks pretty bad, actually. <laughs> Never played that one. Um, went over Evolution before, now we have the sequel, and that is Evolution 2, Far Off Promise. Um, kind of cool artwork on this one, at least. I'll give it that. I don't know, maybe it improved over the original a little bit. Next one is the uh, what at the time was the exclusive Dreamcast uh, game in this series, and that is Resident Evil Code Veronica. I know this game was really popular for the Dreamcast when it was new. Um, then we get into some sports games that I don't care about. And so we have NFL Blitz 2001. And then NFL Quarterback Club 2000. Uh, Tomb Raider The Last Revelation. I believe this was a launch game. Uh, Trick Style. Another sports game. NFL Blitz 2000. You'll notice it's the hot new re, uh, reissue of the game with the bug fix. Then we have NBA 2K1. Another movie I never saw, so I don't know uh, why I would care about the game, but that is Chicken Run. And another movie I never saw, so I don't care about the game, and that is Dinosaur. And then we have ESPN NBA Tonight. Next stack. So another game that uh, was one of the more high dollar ones that I still needed. And uh, I don't know, I do want to kind of play this. I think I played it a little bit when it came out new and wasn't super impressed with it, but Capcom was kind of knocking it out of the park with <laughs> Dreamcast releases at the time, so it was hard to keep up with all of them. But uh, this one is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And uh, yeah, I'd say this is pretty rare for the system. It's It also came out on PS1, and that version I think is super rare, but um, I don't know, people still seem to pay more money for this one, but whatever, that's cool. It's probably the, uh, the better version of the two. Uh, then we have ESPN International Track and Field. And another sports game, NBA Hoops, starring Shaq. Another uh, Capcom fighter was Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, always owned the second one, but never had the first for some reason, so kind of cool to get that. Another Tomb Raider game, Tomb Raider Chronicles. We have a port of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which came out on tons of systems. Uh, next one is Sega Smash Pack Volume 1. There never was a Volume 2. It was kind of a cool idea. They put a bunch of like Genesis and Saturn games on uh, one pack, but the porting was kind of bad, uh, according to a lot of reports. So, I don't know. I'd probably rather just play these on the original system rather than play this. Next one, I don't know. I thought this one was a really stupid idea for a game, but uh, it is Stupid Invaders and the Epic Adventures of Five Incredibly Stupid Aliens. Uh, another multi-disc game. I think this is a PC port. We have another uh, Rainbow Six game. This is the first one. Um, MTV Sports Skateboarding featuring Andy McDonald, whoever that is. We have uh, one of the gambling games on the system, Caesars Palace 2000. Um, Echo the Dolphin, the Defender of the Future. Didn't really ever like the Echo series, but uh, I think this was the last game in the series, and then they finally pulled the plug. Next one is Snowcross Championship Racing. Snowmobile racing. Mmm, fun. Uh, Roadsters by Titus. Can only imagine how lousy this is based on the uh, publisher. Uh, 4x4 Evo, which I um, guess if you ever wanted to drive a Nissan Xterra through uh, the wilderness, you can play this game. Cool stuff. Um, next one is Pen Pen Tri Isilon, which uh, I think was another launch title. Kind of a uh, cartoony looking uh, launch game compared to most of the other games that were pretty serious. Then we have Test Drive V Rally. The other game published by UFO, which is Seventh Cross Evolution. Next one is Tee Off, which I think is the only golf game that came out in the US uh, Dreamcast. Kind of strange. You would think they would have ported something else to it, but. Whatever, if you like golf, that's what you gotta play, I guess. Uh, next stack, I got two more stacks of Dreamcast games. Like I said, it was a big month. Next one is Jeremy McGrath Supercross 2000. Then we have World Series Baseball 2K2. 
Um, I do like baseball games, but I never played this one. I, I had the first World Series baseball on Dreamcast. It wasn't very good, so I never bought this, the uh, second one, but I think this one is actually supposed to be a little better. Okay, and the last stack of Dreamcast stuff I picked up this month. Uh, so I got Star Wars Demolition. Uh, again, hate Star Wars, so we'll just skip right by that. Next is Star Lancer. Then we have the original Speed Devils. Uh, port of the arcade game, Four Wheel Thunder. Uh, cashing in on the Olympic success of the time, we have Sydney 2000 Olympic Games. Um, the Grinch, so another uh, series I, or, I don't know, franchise I don't care about. Um, next I have a puzzle game, and I am a big puzzle game fan, but uh, this is one I never cared for. I used to have the N64 version, so don't really think that this one's that much better, and that is Wetrix Plus, uh, the enhanced version of this. Next we have Kiss Psycho Circus. Mmm, yeah, not a fan of Kiss. Uh, one of the arcade collections for the series, for the system. Um, Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits, Volume 1. Um, probably not really pushing the system to only put six of these games on the pack, but uh, at least they're decent games. I mean, I like Joust, so whatever, kind of cool. Next we have Surf Rocket Racers. Jet Ski Racing. Yeah. Uh, then we have the original press of Hydro Thunder, which is another uh, Midway arcade port. We have Revolt, uh, I believe it's RC Car Racing. Some more licensed crap. Uh, Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour. Cart uh, racing with a bunch of Disney characters. And we have the other baseball game I told you about earlier that uh, really wasn't that big a fan of when it came out new. Uh, World Series 2K1. Uh, Looney Tunes Space Race, more kart racing character garbage. Um, then we have Demolition Racer No Exit, which features music by um, Cirrus, Impuron, and Coffee Boys. Some big artists right there I've never even heard of. Um, then we have, wow, this is one dorky looking cover, um, Razor Freestyle Scooter. Yeah, because Razor Scooters were so hot at this time. Mm, yeah, no. Um, then we have a Sega arcade port. This actually was a decent arcade game. Um, slow paced, but you know to be understood based on what you're racing with. And uh, that is 18 wheeler American Pro Trucker. Um, very popular game in truck stops across America, of course. So yeah, kind of neat. I got a Dreamcast port. Next one is TNN Motorsports Hardcore Heat. Um, yeah, whatever. Then we have the next Tetris Online Edition. Uh, I do like Tetris, I don't know, I haven't played this one. I think it was just kind of a PC port, so it probably really isn't that well polished for Dreamcast. Um, there was another Japanese-only Tetris game for Dreamcast that um, I, I don't think was very good either. So, I don't know, Dreamcast didn't really do so hot with Tetris games for some reason. Then we have uh, what was a launch game for the system, Virtua Fighter 3 TB. Um, I do like the Virtua Fighter games. I don't really think this is one of the better ones, but, you know, whatever. At least it's out on Dreamcast. Then we have WWF Attitude, one of the two uh, WWF games on the system. Um, then I have ECW Hardcore Revolution, and there is another ECW game for the Dreamcast, which is still one of my uh, ten left that I need for the system, so I'll be looking for that one this month, as little as I ever would want to play it. Um, the next one is Flag to Flag, and I think this was a launch game as well. Then we have the original football game, uh, first party for the system, NFL 2K. The next one is Bang, Gunship Elite. Um, I don't know, PC stuff probably. And the third, uh, Star Wars game, so another one in the series that I can't stand. Uh, Star Wars Episode One: Jedi Power Battles. Then we have NBA Showtime, NBA on NBC. Also with Shaq on the cover. Apparently he was popular at the time. Um, then we have Sega Bass Fishing, which is the uh, port of the arcade game. Um, NBA 2K2. Slave Zero. NBA 2K. Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, which uh, this was a pretty popular game. I remember this was a big deal when this came out for Dreamcast. Uh, Fighting Force 2, 
Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, one of the billions of ports of this game. It's actually pretty fun. I, I don't know. I liked playing that back a long time ago. And the last game I got for Dreamcast this month, uh, Dave Mira Freestyle BMX. Um, yeah, kind of a, another downer to end on, but uh, a lot of Dreamcast games, like I said, that was a big focus this month. Uh, should be wrapping that collection up next month. Um, next, I'm going to go over another system I put a lot of focus into this month, and I picked up quite a few games for it. Uh, a lot of good ones, stuff I've really been wanting, and uh, a lot of stuff that is really rare games for the system, even though they're not really the most fun type of stuff, but uh, cool to get it. So um, and that I'm talking about is the original Black and White Game Boy. Um, picked up a lot of games for that. So let's start with some uh, some pretty cool ones here. Um, this is one of the, uh, the bigger high tier games for the system that I've really been wanting. And that is Kid Dracula. And this is a side story of the Castlevania series. It's actually um, kind of a parody of Castlevania, if you will. Um, it's pretty fun. I, I like the graphics of it. They did a really good job of it. Um, some cool animations with this. It's it's just, I don't know, the levels are kind of okay. I, I, maybe I need to give it a little more time. I was, I was hoping for a little more, but uh, it's pretty neat. I mean, I, I do respect a lot that they put a lot of effort into this game. So a lot of Game Boy games were really quite lazy, so... Um, cool to get this. I mean, like I said, this is a big deal. It's a pretty expensive game for the Game Boy, so it was, it was cool to pick this up this month. Uh, next one is a movie I've never seen, which a lot of people love, and that is Beetlejuice. I do you believe, for some reason, the Game Boy version of this game is pretty rare? Um, then we have Kirby's Pinball Land. And another pinball game, Pinball Fantasies. Uh, Track and Field. And here's another high dollar game, and this one I actually fell in love with this month. Um, I love the Castlevania series of games up to when they went 3D and kind of, uh, eh, stop being fun. But as far as the classic 2D Castlevanias, I've pretty much played them all. This is one I missed out on, and uh, that is Castlevania Legends with a female protagonist. So we have Sonya Belmont uh, is the star of this game. I thought this was great. I got really hooked on this. The levels in this are super, super long, like 15 to 20 minutes each. Um, it's fun. I, I don't know. It's very fair. All the deaths I consider are pretty fair. It brings some, like, crazy new ideas to the series that aren't in any cast other Castlevania games. Um, she has, like, a superpower effect that you can just use once per, uh, per life. Um, but it's very useful in fighting the bosses. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. This was really cool. I mean, I got into this. I played it all the way through this month, and, um, great game. I highly recommend picking this one up, uh, despite its reputation. Some people aren't really a fan of this one. I don't know why. Um, graphics are okay. I mean, they're not really going to blow you away, but, um, it's, it's, it's consistent, you know, at least it, it plays very well. Um, next we have Superman by Titus. Um, only can hope that this is a little better than Titus's N64 Superman game, but, uh, who knows? I haven't tried it yet. Um, going with Titus, we have another one, and that is the Blues Brothers. Um, another weird franchise that Titus latched onto. And then we have The Flash. Um, next one is a game that got ported to just about everything, and I mean Jaguar, and just every system had a, a game in this series, and I don't really know why, because this character was kind of a failed mascot. Um, for some reason, the Game Boy version of it is pretty rare, and that is Zool, um, the ninja of the nth dimension. But, um, yeah, this is hard to find for Game Boy. Um, next one is Swamp Thing, which is, uh, also came out on NES. Believe it or not, I didn't have this. It's one of my all-time favorite series. Um, I've owned just about every game in the series. I just didn't ever own the Game Boy port of the original, and that is Bubble Bobble. But um, don't really think this game is that good on Game Boy, but I love it, so I'll, I'll just give it a pass. I mean, it's uh, it does what it can with what the system can do. So, yeah, good stuff. Uh, next is a movie port, and that is Dragon Heart. Um, yeah, don't think I'll be playing that one. Um, I also picked up the Game Boy version of Total Carnage this month. Uh, Road Rash. Then we have another failed mascot, and that is Bubsy 2. Uh, next is Godzilla. Um, one of my favorite developers on the Game Boy is HAL Labs, and uh, they made a wrestling game. It's called HAL Wrestling, but you don't see that too often. Um, next one is another movie port that uh, eh, is somewhat rare on Game Boy, and that is Lethal Weapon. This next one, I hardly ever see this game. I don't know. I think it's underrated as far as how rare it is. I've heard it's a really good port. It's a pretty late release for the original Game Boy because it does have Super Game Boy compatibility. 
Um, it's a fighting game port, but I'd like to play it, and that is World Heroes 2 Jet. Um, it's supposed to be pretty decent. I don't know. I think it's got SD characters, but uh, yeah, I don't know if I could give that a shot. Uh, next deck here, I have a side story game of the Boy and His Blob uh, series, and that is The Rescue of Princess Blobette. Um, I don't know. I didn't really like a Boy and His Blob on the NES, but whatever. Maybe it's better. Uh, another obscure game. This came out on the NES as well. It's also pretty unusual to find it on the NES. It's not a great game. Uh, maybe the Game Boy version is a little different, but that is Castellian. And um, I almost forgot this even existed on Game Boy. You don't see this game much. Um, next one is a Data East. I believe this is an arcade port, and that is Lock and Chase. And then we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Back from the Sewers. Um, haven't played that, but I know a lot of those Konami Ninja Turtle games at that time were pretty good, so hopefully that's decent. Um, next one is one of the other billions of ports of this game, and that is Clax, which I always like Clax. Um, next one, I don't know much about this one at all, it's another Super Game Boy uh, enhanced game, and that is Brain Drain. And then we have another one of my all-time favorite series, which is uh, related to the Bubble Bobble series, and that is Bust a Move 2 Arcade Edition. I've owned this on several different platforms, just never had the Game Boy version. Um, next one is a puzzle game, and that is Dexterity by uh, SNK. And we'll go into our next deck here. Um, we have Street Racer. That game got ported to a lot of systems, uh, as did this one, Earthworm Jim. Uh, one of the shooters on the Game Boy, I do love shooters, is uh, the original R-Type. And uh, Game Boy Color also got a version of R-Type as well, they enhanced it a little bit. This next one, I've been looking for this one really hard. Um, big fan of Taito, like I've said many times before. I truly believe this is the rarest Taito game on Game Boy. I, I never ever see this game in the wild. I found one this month, I was jumping for joy to find this game so again if this is common in your area i'd be surprised because i don't ever see this game in the wild um and that is i think it's an rpg because i haven't tried it yet but it is called night quest um really really nice condition cartridge of this too so i was super excited to get this i think this is cool um taito i mean they are known for low print runs especially in the cartridge era I wouldn't be surprised if this is uh, one of their rarest games. Um, I just, again, I never see this game. I, I look for games all the time. Have been forever. So, um, really cool to get Night Quest. Next one is a series I also enjoy, and that is Adventure Island 2 um, Aliens in Paradise. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably a, a same port of the same game on NES, but if it's a little different, I'm hoping it is. I'll, I'll give this one a shot. Uh, next one is Fastest Lap. Then we have one that everyone raves about on Game Boy. I've never owned this uh, version of the game. I'm looking forward to trying it out because I know it adds a little bit to the uh, franchise. And that is Donkey Kong, which uh, I've heard great things about. So looking forward to trying that. Um, next one is another game that came out on NES as well and uh, kind of obscure. That is Zen Intergalactic Ninja. And then we have another franchise I don't care about, but that is Star Trek Generations Beyond the Nexus. Uh, Super Game Boy Enhanced. This next one is kind of funny. Uh, I did spend some time playing this this month. That is Out of Gas. And um, it's the classic uh, sexist situation that um, your spaceship ran out of gas and uh, you as the man must go get gas while your complaining girlfriend sits in the passenger seat. Um, that is basically the plot of this game. And then uh, you hunt around and um, shoot spaceships for gas and pick up gas cans. and I don't know. It's kind of funny, I guess, but yeah, kind of traditional in that way, I guess. Um, this next one, this is for some reason the rarest port of this game. It is a tough game to find on Game Boy. It's super common on other platforms and a uh, rather infamous game, especially lately. A lot of people talking about a new version of this coming out and that is Shaq Fu. Um, super Game Boy Enhanced too, so who knows what, uh, what good stuff you can play with Shaq Fu on Game Boy. Uh, next one, a game that got ports to a lot of systems, and uh, Game Boy games a little bit more uncommon, that is Rampart. This next one, I didn't even know this movie port came out on Game Boy, it's pretty rare I think, and that is Universal Soldier with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. And uh, next stack here, I picked up um, probably the two games that just about everybody has on their Game Boy, and I waited because, I don't know, I never really got into the franchise, but uh, that is Pokemon Red and Blue, which, you know, everyone's got to have these, right? 
I'm sure I'll get a Pokemon Yellow as well. I consider that a, an original Game Boy game. As far as the newer ones, yeah, I call those Game Boy Colors, so I'll probably skip out on those. Um, this next one's pretty tough to find, and I um, believe it's just an RPG. I haven't tried it yet, but that is Sword of Hope 2. And the 2 is very tiny on that. A lot of people just think this is Sword of Hope, but there's a original Sword of Hope for Game Boy as well. Um, we talked about Bomberman a lot in the video today, and we have Bomberman GB. Um, this next one I'm looking forward to trying. I think it's kind of another obscure oddity on Game Boy, and that is Battle Bowl. Um, don't really know what this is all about, but the title is interesting, so I'll give it a shot. Uh, the next one is Quarth, and uh, that's a pretty common game. Um, this one is Sports Illustrated for Kids, The Ultimate Triple Dare, because I triple dog dare you to think this game is going to be any fun. Uh, next one, and uh, there are five games in the series for Game Boy. I only have two of them now, and that is Mega Man, the original. Next one is a classic game that's on a lot of systems, and that is Shanghai. And then we have uh, one that every Game Boy player always has to have, and that is Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins. Uh, never owned this as a kid, surprisingly, so just now getting that. And finally, for original Game Boy, I have Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. And I actually just lied when I said that was it, because I just remembered I have a couple box games this month, too. Um, so I picked up a copy of the original Pac-Man in box. And these next two are very nice. Uh, definitely a collector owned these and traded them in. And that is um, the Final Fantasy Legend, and this is complete. And then I also got Final Fantasy Legend 2 complete, and these are in awesome shape. Um, these are actually the re-releases of these games. They came out in the late 90s as a re-release. You can tell that uh, because it has the Sunsoft logo, though. So Sunsoft, Sunsoft did a lot of reissues of uh, original Game Boy games. So in case you're ever hunting them down, that's one of the things you could look for as kind of a tip-off that it's a re-release. Um, then I also picked up a few Game Boy Color games this month, and um, the first one of these is a port of the arcade classic, 1942. Uh, this, this one goes for some decent money. I was a little surprised. I picked it up cheap and looked it up, and I was like, wow, this is actually going for about 30 bucks or so. So it's pretty cool. Um, I, I played it a little bit last night, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a fun port of the game. Uh, the next one is a uh, DC Comics license. I am not a DC fan. I am a Marvel fan. Um, but I thought it was cool to have this because it's actually a disguised port of a classic arcade uh, Taito game. And that original game in the arcade was called Frontline. It was one of their very first games. So for some reason they turned this into a licensed property for Game Boy Color and called it Sergeant Rock on the Frontline. But it is actually just an enhanced port of Frontline. So the more you know. Um, the next one is a shooter that I've been looking forward to trying. Uh, I don't think it's really regarded that well, but I do want to collect it because I like shooters so much. And that is Project S11, so definitely looking forward to trying that. Um, this next game, I got this one from Japan in the mail this month, and uh, this is one I've wanted for years. This is the only port of this obscure arcade game, and it is a lot of fun. If you are a fan of Mr. Driller, you need this game. It is uh, very similar, at least one of the two games. It's actually two games in one. And that is called Tower and Shaft Advance. And I got a complete copy of this. So it's actually a mix of uh, two games. One's called Tower, where you climb through a tower with using only one button. And the other one is uh, called um, Shaft, and you descend through a cavern only by using the D-pad. There are no buttons used in Shaft. So uh, very simple, easy to pick up, but it's uh, addicting and it's a lot of fun. I um, thought this was really a cool game. And... Kind of obscure, uh, you don't see it pop up on eBay very often, but I was really happy to get a copy of this this month, so very cool. Uh, sticking with portables, I have one game for Game Boy Advance, and it is sealed, and that is Popeye, the Rush for Spinach. Uh, I don't know, I just kind of bumped into this, and I was like, well, you know what, it's sealed, What? I'll pick it up. When are you going to see that again? Uh, next one, let's just stick with portables for a second here. Um, picked up a few games for Game Gear this month, and this first one, I think this is one of the last releases on Game Gear. I need to look this up, because uh, it's a 1996 release. I know Game Gear was kind of running out of steam around there. So this one is called Arena Maze of Death. Uh, that's a very upbeat title, but uh, yeah. Who knows what that's all about? I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I thought it... You know, I don't see this very often. I need to get this. Uh, next one is one of my all-time favorite series I've talked about before, so I had to get the Game Gear port of it, and that is Outrun. 
Uh, next one is one of the last Sonic release games for it. I believe it's uh, a lot like Sonic Spinball on Genesis, but they gave it a different name on, on uh, Game Gear, and that is Sonic Labyrinth. And then we have a port of the Treasure game that's also on uh, Genesis, and that is Dynamite Heady. And I picked up uh, what I think is one of the rarest games on Game Gear. Again, a late release. Um, the only starring game they gave for Sonic's PAL, and that is Tails Adventure. Um, don't think it's a very good game, but it's a hard one to find. So, yeah, kind of cool to get that. And finally, for the Game Gear, I picked up, uh, again, one of my favorite franchises. And this is a port of the arcade game, which isn't really as good as the NES games. But uh, that is Ninja Gaiden. So, uh, yeah. If you want to play arcade-style Ninja Gaiden, this is one way to do it. Um, so to wrap up portables, let's go over some stuff I got for the DS this month. And this first one I had to get just because I'd never really heard of it before, but I liked the title. And that is Boing Dokomodaki DS. Um, kind of neat because it even has this little slipcase too, so... Whatever. Um, cool artwork, don't really know. Maybe it's a anime or something, but uh, yeah, kind of cool. So, whatever. Picked it up. Um, next one is a collection of Konami arcade games, and that is Konami Classics Arcade Hits. Uh, looks like there's quite a bit of stuff on this one, so it's kind of a cool collection. Uh, next one is a first-party Nintendo game, and that is Custom Robo Arena. And then we have uh, a side story game of a classic uh, Sega arcade game that never got a proper home port, and that is Jumbo Safari Animal Rescue. I uh, haven't played this one yet, but I do like Jumbo Safari. Uh, next one is Lost in Blue, and I think there are three of these for the for the DS. Um, next one's a series I really liked when it first started, and then I think it kind of got watered down pretty quick, as Nintendo is apt to do. Um, but that is WarioWare DIY. Um, I think it was like Wario games, but WarioWare games, but you have to make them yourself, which kind of lazy, whatever. I probably won't play this one too much. I do like the earlier games in the series a lot. Uh, next one is an Atlas release that I picked up pretty much just because of that. I don't know anything else about it. And that is Drone Tactics. And finally, for the DS, I got another first-party Nintendo game. This one, um, I don't think they've really done anything with this franchise. This was actually a new Nintendo character, which um, usually they're able to milk that for a lot of other games. But um, this one is The Glory of Heracles. Um, haven't played it yet, but the artwork on it looks pretty cool, so, I don't know, it might be decent. Try it out. Maybe there's a reason it never went beyond that one game. Uh, next system I'll cover is the Sega Genesis. I only picked up a few games for the Genesis this month. First one of those is X-Men 2, uh, cartridge only. Used to have this game. It's pretty decent. Um, I think it's, you know, pretty well regarded as a good X-Men game. A lot of them were, at that time period, were kind of lousy. Uh, next one is Alicia Dragoon. Uh, again, only has the name on the label there, but uh, early Sega first party game. Kind of cool to get that. Uh, Alright, so the next one I got is a port of a classic arcade game uh, from the 80s, but it took a while to come out on the Genesis, and that is Time Killers. And the next one I got is uh, Boxed, and that is uh, Street Fighter, or sorry, Streets of Rage 3, which is the uh, final in the series of beat em ups for the Genesis, which is kind of cool. Uh, next few are complete, and first one of those is Fantasy Star 3, Generations of Doom, which is one of the uh, first-party RPGs for the system. Uh, and then we have a port of the arcade classic, Marble Madness, and um, I like Marble Madness quite a bit. I actually got to play uh, one of the trackball original arcade cabinets that this week, so definitely uh, want to try out the Genesis version, because I've heard this one holds up pretty good. Uh, next, we have a Sega first-party developed Disney game, and that is Quackshot, featuring Donald Duck. Uh, that is all I got for the Genesis this month. Next, I have the PS2, and picked up a pretty decent stack of PS2 games this month. Uh, first one of those is Gundam Encounters in Space. There's about eight Gundam games that came out on US PS2. I'd say this one's about medium rarity as far as they go, but uh, yeah, kind of need to get that. It has cool artwork. Uh, next one's a game I'd never seen before in the wild, so I picked it up. Don't really know a whole lot about it, but uh, I figure because it's age tech, it should be somewhat rare. And that is Kingsfield, the Ancient City. I uh, mentioned the Ultimate Muscle characters earlier on GameCube. I picked up their PS2 game as well, and that is Galactic Wrestling featuring Ultimate Muscle. 
Uh, then we have a Sega series that I do like quite a bit, and I think this one was uh, not an arcade game like the other ones were, but this one is Virtual on Mars. Uh, I think this is the most recent game in the series that's come out. Next we have uh, another game I've owned, the Japanese version, for many years. I think this is a great game for the PS2. That is Klonoa 2, Lunatea's Veil. Vale. Um, next I picked up the three Shining Force series games that came out on PS2, so I think it's kind of cool to knock all those out in one month. Uh, first one of those is Shining Force Neo. Then we have Shining Tears. And finally, Shining Force EXA. And I'm not really sure what order those came out in, but anyway, I think that's the three taken care of. Uh, this next one I've heard great things about. I'm looking forward to trying it, and that is God Hand. Uh, next we have a game I didn't even realize came out on the PS2. It's pretty rare, I think. That is King of Fighters Collection, the Orochi Saga, which is all the early King of Fighters arcade games uh, in one handy collection. This also came out on the Wii. Uh, next one is uh, very cheesy, but I love this game to death. I've played the Japanese version of this uh, for a long time. Um, it's very simplistic, but uh, I think it's very cool to see a Japanese take on uh, the lowrider culture. And uh, I think it's very cool that this came out in the U.S., um, I don't know how the U.S. version compares. I know they have added music from Little John and the East Side Boys, uh, who are also known on the box here as the Kings of Crunk. Um, hopefully it's uh, not messed with too much, because this is actually a really fun game. Um, it's dumb, but give it a shot. I, I love this game, so I highly recommend picking up Lowrider. This is very cheap. Uh, next one is not a game that's very cheap, and uh, not really something I know a whole lot about, but I know it's uh, pretty desirable. And that is MS Saga, A New Dawn. Next we have a uh, game that had uh, multiple s series releases on the system. This is the only one I have. And that is Xenosaga Episode 2. Um, next is another game I've owned on Japanese PlayStation for many years. I highly recommend this game as well. It's a great action game. And that is Bujingai, The Forgotten City. This was a collaboration between Taito and Red. And uh, they did a great job on this game. It has high production values. It's really cool. Uh, underrated for sure. Um, next one is Lagaya 2 Dual Saga. Then we have a couple of working designs games for the system. First one of these is Sylphie the Lost Planet, which is a uh, enhanced version of the old Sylphie game on Sega CD. And next is Gun Griffin Blaze, which, uh, I don't know, never played any of the Gun Griffin games, so I don't know how that is. Uh, finally, another collection of SNK uh, fighters for the PS2, and that is World Heroes Anthology. So let's do PS1 next. I've got a healthy stack of PS1 games. A lot of obscure stuff on this system this month. I had a great month for picking up PS1 games. Um, first one of these is a Squaresoft um, RPG that I don't really think did that well. It was called Threads of Fate. Uh, as far as I know, they've never used these characters in any other game. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but um, yeah, I think this was kind of a unique one for the series. Um, next one is a really cool Working Designs box package, and that is Lunar 2, the Eternal Blue Complete. Um, there are all kinds of freebies that come with this game. Um, an amulet that you get to wear if you want to, and um, a bunch of other crap that you'll never use. But really cool to uh, have a nice deluxe package like this for the PS1, because there wasn't a lot of this being done back then. I mean, I know we take that for granted because limited editions are everywhere today, but uh, in its time, this was pretty unique, especially for the size of package you got for uh, your money back then. So cool to pick that up. It has all the goodies, and they're all sealed in that one. Um, next one is a game that I've also owned the Japanese version of for several years. The U.S. version of this is very rare, but I love this game, and I wanted to get that as well. It's Castlevania Chronicles. This is a uh, port of the X68000 Japanese computer-only uh, release of a Castlevania game that is actually very cool. Um, highly recommend picking this up if you like classic-style Castlevania games. It's not Metroidvania, but it's the old classic style uh, of adventure, you know, and I highly recommend picking this up if you like Castlevania. Uh, next is Fantastic Four. Haven't played that yet. Um, next is one of the more obscure SNK releases, and that is Fatal Fury Wild Ambition. This was one of the 3D fighting games. Um, don't know how this one is, but don't see it too often. Um, next, and this is weird that this came out so late on the PS1, but that is a port of the arcade game X-Men Children of the Atom. Uh, this came out like four years after the Saturn version on PS1. That's why it's kind of rare on PS1. So 
I don't know, Saturn probably did a better job of handling this game, uh, the arcade port, because it had more RAM. But, um, yeah, at least it was cool that it came out. It was kind of not very timely, so I don't think that's why it did very well. But uh, cool to pick that up. This next game, I've been looking for this for years, uh, and that is Xevious 3D slash G+. Um, it's a new Xevious game. It's probably not very good. The reason I wanted this is it has ports of Xevious the arcade game, but also Xevious 2, which I believe this is the only way you can get this on a home console is to play Xevious 2 if you want to play that. So very cool to get this. It's very hard to find. I don't know why. Um, I mean, most of that other Namco stuff sold pretty well. This game must have just completely flopped, but it's um, very cool to pick this up. I've been looking for this a long time. Um, next is a series I love. This is actually the original in the series, and that is Tokyo Highway Battle. Um, it's also been called Tokyo Extreme Racer and some of the newer versions of this game in the U.S. Um, it's, you know, very basic, but, I mean, this is where the series got its start, so it makes sense. Um, it's a very cool game. Next is a game, I again, I never see this game. I think this is a, a very, very rare game on PS1 that people don't really notice because it's a, it's a sports game. Uh, but that is Goldstorm 97. And then we have uh, Pool Hustler. Metal Gear Solid VR Missions. I think uh, now I've got all the Metal Gear Solid games for that system. Uh, next one is kind of unique. This is the only um, home version of a lacrosse game ever made. So if you're into the sport of lacrosse, well, guess what? This is what you need to get. Um, Blast Lacrosse. Next one, and this is, again, a very obscure game for PS1 that a lot of people are looking for now. Uh, it has a very cool cover that is unique to the game. Um, it is called Skull Monkeys, and it's a claymation action game. Uh, I don't know if you can see that with the camera, but the cover uh, kind of rotates his eyeball there. So it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, very neat to pick that up. Uh, next is a sealed copy of Soul of the Samurai. Just picked it up because, you know, when are you going to find that sealed again, I guess, right? Um, next one is a game by Polyphony Digital, which is the Gran Turismo uh, makers, of course. And uh, this is one of their other franchise games that they came up with that didn't really do that well, but I think it's probably pretty high production values, if it's uh, judging by their normal standards. That is Omega Boost. Um, next is another game that is super obscure on the PS1 for some reason, and that is Batman Forever, the arcade game. Uh, I'm upgrading my disc-only copy. I got this complete this month. Um, you don't see this game very much at all. Some of those early acclaimed titles are very hard to find on PS1 for some reason. They also put that out on Saturn. I'm highly looking for that right now as well. Um, this next game, again, I've owned the Japanese version of it for a long time. U.S. version of this is super, super rare. I never, ever see this game in the wild. It's pretty fun. It's, uh, you know, the license is cheesy, but it's by Kaze, who made a lot of great pinball games. And uh, that is Power Rangers Zeo Full Tilt Battle Pinball. Uh, it's dumbed down a little bit from their average games, just, I guess, for the youth audience. But, uh, yeah, this is very, very hard to find on PS1. So, very cool to get this this month. Next one is another very rare PS1 game, and uh, I hardly ever see this game. I got it complete, too. That is Tale of the Sun. It's another Art Dink game. <laughs> this game got some horrible reviews when it first came out. I think it just was people didn't really understand the concept of it. So, I kind of want to give it a shot and see if it's really as bad as a lot of people said. Um, but it's it's cool. I like the artwork, too. I think it's pretty neat. Um, next one is Brahma Force, the Assault on Belt Logger 9. Okay, that's a title. And after that, we have um, one of the most crucial pieces of the Final Fantasy universe ever released. Not really. Um, that is Chocobo's Dungeon 2. Uh, next one is another game. I think it's a lot rarer than people really give it credit for. Uh, it was a later released by Capcom, and that is Trickin' Snowboarder. They also put out a game, Freestyle Borden 99. So this was their second snowboarding game for the PS1. Next one, another super obscure game on PS1. This was a budget title that came out uh, for the holiday of Easter, and uh, I guess was designed to be a basket stuffer for kids. I don't think anyone really uh, went for the bait on that, but that is Easter Bunny's Big Day, and uh, just a simple like puzzle game or whatever, not much to it. I thought it was kind of unique, too, because the spine on this is blue, which is the only uh, PS1 game that has a non-black spine, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that I've seen before. But, yeah, this is uh, another very rare game for PS1 that a lot of people are kind of going after now that they realize that. 
Next one is another very rare game for PS1 that I owned at disc only for many years. I love this game. It's got great artwork. Highly recommend picking this up. That is The Adventures of Lomax. And this is actually a side story of the Lemmings games, which I hate Lemmings, but uh, this is a very fun game. Definitely like this one. It's early, uh, 2D, you know, a lot of people say, oh, PS1 can't do 2D. No, this is a beautiful game, and I highly recommend picking this one up. Um, another one is Incredible Crisis. Uh, this one I don't see very often either, and that is Floating Runner, Quest for the Seven Crystals. Uh, I haven't played this one yet, but I like the artwork style on the cover and everything. It looks pretty neat. Um, next one is Dragon Valor by Namco. It's a couple disc game. And then we have another uh, late release RPG, and that is Hoshigami, Ruining Blue Earth uh, by Atlas. Been looking for this one for a while. I think it's a uh, pretty cool artwork on it, so hopefully it's a good game. Uh, finally, for PS1, I have a few big box titles. And uh, this first one, again, I mean, if you collect rare PS1 games, I know this is on your list because it's a very tough one to find. And that is Psychic Detective. This is a three-disc game. Um, I think this came out on 3DO as well. Maybe even computer, I'm not sure. It's just another one of those uh, FMV murder mystery type games, I guess. Um, probably very horrible, but yeah, this is a hard one to find for sure. Um, next one is a game I've been wanting to try, and it's another long box game. That is the original Jumping Flash. There's a Jumping Flash 2 I'd like to find as well. And finally for PS1 is Bases Loaded 96 Double Header. And, um, yeah, I don't know, whatever. You don't see this too often. This also came out on Saturn, so, uh, yeah, kind of cool. And speaking of Sega Saturn, I'm going to wrap up my video today by going over a lot of Sega Saturn games. Um, I made a huge haul of Sega Saturn games in Fort Wayne, Indiana. There was a store there that had a large collection of Sega Saturn games for sale. I will say most of these are crappy sports games. Uh, there's not a whole lot of really awesome stuff. But as far as condition on a lot of these, you couldn't beat it. Uh, most of these were looked like they were brand new. The shrink wrap had just been torn off them. It must have been like a wholesaler buyout because they had multiple copies of a lot of these. So I made a huge haul of Saturn games there. I picked up a few other ones from around um, many of my other stops this month. Um, so there's a mix of some of these that are in different conditions. But a lot of these games were in very top condition. So... Again, that's uh, going to be the remainder of my video right now, so hopefully if you like Sega Saturn, we'll uh, show off the rest of that, and then I'll kind of wrap up for the day. So, first stack of these is Sega Worldwide Soccer 97. Then we have Creature Shock Special Edition. Uh, Mystaria, The Realms of Lore. And uh, this game was actually re-released as Blazing Heroes, I believe. Uh, I guess the title was too close to Mist, and they sued or something like that. I don't know. Mist was hot around the time this came out. Uh, next one is the original Tomb Raider. And then we have Iron Man XO Man of War in Heavy Metal. And this also came out for PS1. Um, this next one is um, definitely a very cool arcade port. Uh, this one I do actually like quite a bit. And that is Marvel Super Heroes. Uh, a lot of the artwork in this game became kind of the framework for what Capcom used in many of their other series over the, the next few years. But uh, this was the first appearance of a lot of the Marvel characters in a Capcom fighting game, which is pretty cool. Uh, next one is Warcraft 2, The Dark Saga. And I mentioned this one earlier because now we have the Saturn version, which came out before the, the PS1 version. And that is X-Men Children of the Atom, another very good uh, Capcom arcade game that was ported to the Saturn. Uh, then we have Hyper 3D Pinball, Pro Pinball, and True Pinball. So three of the pinball games to the system. Uh, going into the next stack here, I've got NHL 97, a Sega First Party fighting game, Last Bronx, a Sonic racing game, but they just raced on feet, not in carts, which was the style at the time, um, which is Sonic R. Next one is a muck, or AMOK, -okay, I don't know, whatever, I'm guessing it's a muck. Um, then we have Minnesota Fats Pool Legend. I highly recommend getting the Genesis version of this because they did a really cool case on it. For some reason, it is vertical, uh, or horizontal, <laughs> horizontal, and Minnesota Fats is uh, splayed out across the side of the case, which is kind of neat on the Genesis version of this. So, I don't know, I'd like to have that one too. Uh, next one is Wing Arms. 
Then we have Midway Presents Arcade Greatest Hits, the Atari Collection 1. This game got ports to tons of systems. NHL 98. Soviet Strike. Thunder Strike 2. F1 Challenge. FIFA 98. Revolution X, starring Aerosmith. Not any good. Uh, Mansion of Hidden Souls. Alright, that's a couple stacks down. Let's do some more. So, we have another Arcade's Greatest Hits. This is Midway Presents Arcade's Greatest Hits. This is a different collection. We have Scorcher. The original World Series Baseball. Virtua Fighter Kids. Virtual Open Tennis. Andretti Racing. World Series Baseball 98. John Madden 97. A lot of boring stuff, like I said. Uh, Worldwide Soccer. The original Need for Speed game. Does have a uh, Ferrari Testarossa 512TR on it. One of my all-time favorite cars. I do like that about it. Um, this next one, this is a very rare game. Again, sports games get kind of tossed aside like, oh, they're not rare. No, there's there are some rare ones out there. This is uh, one that a lot of Saturn collectors are really having trouble finding, and that is 3D Baseball. Um, I actually found two copies of this this month, so I'm going to be selling my extra if you need this game. Let me know. Uh, next one is another port of Earthworm Jim 2, probably the better one of this uh, game, because most of the other ones were on like 16-bit consoles. Um, next one is an early Atlas game for the system, and that is Virtual High Delight. And then we have MLB Bottom of the Ninth. Alright, next stack. I have a port of the PC game Quake. Grid Runner. I mentioned Mist earlier. Here is Mist for the Saturn. Virtual Fighter 2. Virtual Cop. NBA Jam Extreme, because again, everything had to be extreme in the 90s. Machine Head. Gen War. I don't know what that one's about. SimCity 2000. Blast Chamber. And this one came out on PS1 also. Next stack. I have NFL Quarterback Club 97. PTO 2. Another pinball game. I do like this one a lot. Uh, Last Gladiators Digital Pinball. It's another Kaze-developed game. Very good. Uh, NBA Live 98. Ten Pin Alley. Good bowling game. Used to have that for PS1. Quarterback Attack. The Professional Quarterback Simulator. Okay. Uh, Sega Touring Car Championship. NHL All-Star Hockey 98. Striker 96, Pebble Beach Golf Links, Robo Pit, Tetris Plus, that got ported to PS1 as well, Crusader No Remorse, FIFA Soccer 96, and one more stack. Like I said, there's quite a few of these. Alright, so finally for Saturn, we have Sega Rally Championship. College Slam, Die Hard Trilogy, there's also a Die Hard Arcade that I need to get, Madden 98, this next one, I had a really, really hard time finding this game, I've been wanting it for years, I think it's very, very uh, underrated as far as how rare this is, and that is Highway 2000 by Natsume, very, very hard find uh, game, for game to find, I do want to play this one though, it's probably not that great as far as today's standards, but yeah, this one is tough to get. Very cool to find that. Uh, Duke Nukem 3D. TNN Motorsports Hardcore 4x4. NFL Quarterback Club 96. Mass Destruction. Cyber Speedway. NASCAR 98. NFL 97. The original Clockwork Knight. The second game in the Bug series, Bug 2. Heir of Zendor, The Legend and the Land. It's 
name. Uh, Pandemonium. And finally, Crime Wave. So yeah, big dent in my Saturn collection this month. I'm hoping to focus on that after I finish up Dreamcast, so I'll probably be buying more Saturn games in the near future. I, I do want them all complete. The biggest challenge with Saturn is a lot of the cases just crack so easily. I mean, most of the ones on the secondary market are all cracked now. I really wish somebody would remake those cases. So if somebody wants to uh, be kind of an entrepreneur, remake that style of case, those long boxes, a lot of PS1 and Saturn collectors would really appreciate that, I'm sure. I have two more things before I wrap up. The first one of those is a couple joysticks I picked up, and that is the Ultimate Super Stick by Bishu for the NES. Um, actually kind of neat, it's a clicky joystick, I was surprised by that. Pretty decent quality, it's uh, got suction cups on the back, I guess you can stick it to a table, but um, yeah, kind of neat to find that, it's a, one of the more obscure joysticks for the NES. And I also picked up a joystick for the Sega Genesis, and that is the Sega Genesis Arcade Power Stick. Um, don't really like the joystick so much, but as far as the construction of it, it's a nice metal stick with uh, big fat buttons on it and everything like that, so I don't know, I'll give it a shot, but it was kind of neat to pick those up too. Alright, so I really appreciate your guys' comments. Uh, please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe on the video, share it with your friends. Let me know how I'm doing. Uh, I'd love to tell you more about what I'm picking up in the future. And uh, if there's nothing else, I'll see you guys next month with uh, what I pick up in the month of August 2014. Thank you very much for watching. I know, again, it was a long video, but uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you picked up some uh, pretty cool thoughts on uh, some of the stuff I got this month. So. If not, uh, nothing else. I'll see you guys soon, and uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Have a good night.